uh, with our man Brandy Alexander, who who launched the wacky team Wednesday yesterday, Brian, right. the great Greg Alexander. Didn't he do it with some passion too? Yeah. I could see him there in his office. It, it, Hello, Greg. It was an honour. Morning, uh, Afternoon, boys. <laughs> morning. I nearly said morning. Yes. Yeah, afternoon. Brian. Yeah. We need to be thankful for our man because, yes. as you know, in radio, television, any media industry, mm. win the morning, win the day. Yeah, I know. The SEN ratings across the board have soared. Soared. So we thank Greg Alexander. Yep. We thank uh, Vossi. But we also thank the trade hour, Two Buck Chuck, yeah, I know. who's been on fire, hasn't he, Brandy? Oh, I, I, it's a must listen, really. I, 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 I tune in. I get up about quarter to five, Jolly, and mm. um, make sure I get the start of <laughs> of Charlie Good Sirs. Uh, he's he's open, opening gambit is strong. It's yeah. um, it's controversial at times. Yeah. Uh, but he does get the tradies. He he gets yeah. those early morning calls, which is uh, as you said, we're 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 thankful for Charlie mm. for getting the day off to such a good start. <laughs> Now, now, Greg, Greg, <laughs> Greg um, uh, are you Brian. calling tonight? Are you calling? What's what's going on? I tonight? am, yes, okay. yes. And well, uh, I, have a guess who I'm calling with. Um, I'm going to say Andrew Voss. Andrew Voss, yes. Uh, you two, yeah, just, yeah. just two peas in a pop. Yeah. We, we were sitting this? here at five this morning and he said, uh, you know, we'll still be together at 10 o'clock tonight. Oh, yeah. no. Anyway, we, Greg, we're, 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 uh, we're enjoying it. We're loving it. Greg, tell us a little, for, the, for the listener, how much prep, what, what are you doing now? Is there much, or after you get off the phone to us, what sort of um, prep would you do? Or do you do all your sort of uh, calling prep earlier in the week? Uh, no, I do it on the day. Okay. Otherwise, if I do it too early, Brian, I forget about it. So yep. I, I do it at, as close to the game as possible, really. Yep. Uh, I'll get into Fox a couple of hours. I'll get to, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get there and prep. But two hours beforehand... And what sort of prep are you doing? Are you looking at every player? Are you looking at their form? What what happens when you say you're prepping? Um, well, I, I look at the, the performances of the teams, basically. Um, mm-hmm. And you just remind yourself how they've gone. At the start of the season, you you, you know, round seven, I can look back at all the games and um, I'm looking who played well in which game, um, what worked for them in each game, what didn't work. Um, and then, you know, it gives you a picture of just how they're performing. So, you know... You know how they've gone over the last, um, uh, you know, the opening six rounds, and that helps you talk about the team's um, their form really, and that's that's basically it. So if I if I know what they've done prior to coming into a game, uh, who's been playing good, what's let them down, that gives you a a bit of information going into the game, so you can pick it up if in fact the same things happen or uh, something different happens. Brian, listen to Vossi and Brandy this morning. Wally, the Statsman Fox League, comes on. This is a compelling stat. So in the grand final runs since the 2020, Melbourne Storm, Penrith Panthers, only two teams to have won a grand final. The Roosters have played nine times Melbourne, nine times the Penrith Panthers. How many games have they won out of those 18 games? The last 18 games? But Between those two teams. Two. One. One. One game. Uh, one game only. Tourist, can you please play this music? Because I've just had an epiphany. Looking at this man on the screen, you can catch up on this chat on YouTube below. But we need to set the scene. Can you play that music again, please, Tourist, when you get the chance? Is Greg aware we can see him? Brandy, we can see you. Look at the camera. No, the other one. (laughs) You're right there. There we go. There we go. (laughs) Well, this music's going to pop up very shortly. And we're talking about the memories of this hallowed turf, which is now Allianz Stadium, which formerly the Sydney Football Stadium. Now, Brian, just look across. We're on the western side. Look across to that 20-metre line Mm. in the corner. The Penrith Panthers, they're leading 17-12. Yes. Right? There's a leather ball that's parked inches in from the paint Mm. on that eastern touch line. And there's a man who has the destiny of the whole of Penrith in his hands. If he kicks this, it should be beyond doubt. Yeah. He moves in, the captain of the club. Moments before, uh, well, not too long before, guys on the Western Touchline desperate to come back on. There'd be a famous try. Izzard, one of the great grand final tries you'll score. But at this very moment, the scoreline is a, a ledger of only five. Mm-hmm. I Ale- back him in. Alexander, the captain, pressure. Some eat it, some get eaten by it. Moves in from the Eastern Touchline. Tobash, mind you. No, round the corner, no. my boy. Round no. the corner. Short back and sides, haircut. Right boot strikes it, heading towards the post, and never, ever, ever looked like missing. Ever. That was a and beautiful he runs call, back. Joel. <laughs> he runs back. 
But you know what, Brandy? I'll tell you what is forgotten about that game. Mm. There was a little sneaky chance for the Raiders because they go short kick off the next set. There's a minute and a half to go. They go short kick off Brian. They trail by seven. And your man, Laurie, there's a penalty right in front. Canberra, oh. take the two. If you take the two, you've got a set to try and steal six points. He didn't take the two. They took the quick tap. Yeah. They took the quick tap, and the rest is but history. There was still seven in front. Seven but if front. they take the two, oh, yeah. the Raiders have a whole set at the Penrith Panthers to change what mm. we now know as history, but it wouldn't matter. No. Because our man, cometh the hour, cometh the man, <laughs> Greg Alexander, who once lived upon opposite the canal there, Brian. I used to stalk him big time, and there he is. Hey? Uh, that's goosebump stuff, Jolly. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> hey, 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 Greg, have you got a, a bit of a, a catch cry you like to throw out in commentary? Because we're talking about how, you know, um, Ray had don't touch the sets, don't touch that dial, don't you yep. go anywhere. Yeah. And now Dan ganane has got goodbye. goodbye. Yes. Yeah. Have you got one, Greg? Uh, no, I haven't. No. Uh, do, do no, you I think leave you should that, work you, on you one? Catch... Brian, don't you think you should leave the catch cry to the, the, no. the main caller? The people <laughs> want wouldn't, catch cries. Wouldn't it Randy? sound a bit funny if I came out no. with a catch cry after <laughs> no. the fact? No, no, no. You, you, but you can't. See, I'm not calling, especially a try. I'm not that. calling the try live. So by the I time I start the talking, I want on the replay. Brian, yes. Brian, by the time I start talking, it is over. No. It's over. Brian, so Greg, see, this is this is yeah. this is what you think. Hey, the Brian. public don't care about the main caller; they want you. Yes, yeah. correct. I want you, Brian. Just imagine Stop this: it. I want those clubs I can see from behind you there. What about Tell Brian? New ones from Drum and Golf. Tell, tell the drum and Brian, golf. imagine <laughs> the great great grandchildren one day jumping on Ancestry.com. Yes, here we go. And they That's found so their great great grandfather, yep. Greg Alexander. Yep who was a, not only a champion rugby league player, he was a champion caller renowned for Replays. his catch cries. That's right. His yeah. catch cries catch on cries Ancestry.com. Now, speaking of Ancestry.com. <laughs> <laughs> what a segue. That was just yeah. magical. Yeah. yeah. Um, one, thing one, I'm glad I, one thing I'm glad I, I, you wouldn't find if you, went, if you Googled my name in 100 years, I went to Ancestry.com, is uh, I didn't go to war. No, um, that's true. And, and so Ancestry.com uh, have done a piece on my uh, my uh, forebears and um, they've found a number of... Uh, they found six that have gone to war. Um, now, they, they focused on one of them and his name was John Fet Fred Frederick Alexander uh, who was born in Cogan. So my dad's side of the family are from Queensland. Um, oh, oh they're, yeah, they're, they're Queensland, and they're still. I've still got relatives, and and relatives that I speak to semi regularly that are uh, that live in Dolby, um, which right. is which is Carl Webb territory. Uh, Carl yeah. Webb uh, was from Dolby, and yep. um, Jason Hetherington. Yep, yep, a couple of famous Queenslanders. Um, so my my great great uncle uh, John Frederick Alexander, who was born in eighteen ninety three. Uh, signed up early and went went to the First World War as a private and a gunner. Um, he had he had two battles, uh, two injuries, wounded twice. So out of the war, recuperated, back in, um, and twice he did that. Um, and the Ancestry dot com people did a, a marvelous job. As I said, I, I found out, and I don't think many of us know our history in terms of once it starts getting past your grandparents um yeah. i think there's a, a lot of lost history and it's been fascinating the little journey that i've been on with ancestry.com to find out um you know my relatives that uh, that fought in the first and second world war true story brian i turned up to sen hq and uh, on the big table there brandy's got this big sheet and i'm thinking oh this is the, the penrith depth chart yeah but it was the Ancestry.com, and, and you were going through the, the, the family tree there, Brandy, and uh, it's very, very important that we that we stay on top of this, Brian, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and especially Anzac Day. Yeah. Anzac Day next week. Yeah, with yeah. Anzac Day coming up, boys, I, I, I think it is. Um, you know, and they've done a fantastic job to, to really flesh out some of the stories uh, of my ancestors uh, and what they went through, um, you know, those many, many years ago. And, and to the point now that I'm... I'm I'm going to get back in touch with Ancestry. dot com. dot au and uh, and ask them to dig a little bit deeper. My my great grandfather, um, who fought in the First World War, 
um, William Sturdy uh, actually fought for the Scottish militia when he was 18 years old. Um, so my, my ancestry is, I, I think both sides of the family, certainly the Alexander side of the family arrived in Australia uh, in, in the early 1800s. But I'd like to delve a little bit deeper and go back you know, and see what they can find. Uh, the Alexander side of the, the family is Scottish. Um, and the my mum's side, the O'Keefe side, uh, is uh, from Ireland. So, so would they? I, can they do so? Uh, Brandy, if they go back and ancestry dot com, are they going? Is it only the people that were born in Australia, or, or can you go? Can they go? Have they got access to go into Scotland records and and our, Irish yeah, records I, and all that sort of Fletch, stuff. Fletcher, I, I, I joined a Zoom meeting with Ancestry and, and the meeting was uh, conducted from London, from England. Um, mm. So they're over there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They've got records um, to trace back, not just what happens to your family tree once it arrives in Australia, but to dig a little bit deeper yeah. and find out um, yeah, how far back and where you come from originally. So it's quite interesting, uh, that's what it? I'm going to be doing. Yeah. I'll tell you a really good story, boys. So Pricey, who you know, he's the assistant coach to Fitzy at, at Cronulla Sharks and a really good mate of mine, best mate of mine. He, through Ancestry.com, pieced a lot of this together. But he, um, he's a grandfather who, obviously they don't know this at the time, but he, he goes to war and he's befriended with this older man. And this older man, uh, unfortunately, doesn't make it through the war. But they were such a close, tight bond over all this time so then they always said, so mate, the word mate comes from meat at the other end. It's a real Anzac term. Mate mm. is meat at the other end. And they had this thing that no matter what happens, let's go and look after each other's families. So he knocks on the door to basically share the news, which they may have known by then anyway, that the, the dad had passed away. And the young girl answers the door. And the young girl ends up marrying the guy who knocks on the door. Oh. So that's how their family... Gotcha. And he pieced a lot of that together, Brandy, too, through... Ancestry.com.au. So it's a, it's a very, very important week. And I think rugby league does it really well, don't you think, Brady? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I don't think. I, I think I think all sports do it well, Joel, because yeah. there's a there's a respect. And Anzac Day is such such a big part of Australia, um, Australian history and Australian culture. So um, there's no doubt that rugby league um, honour everyone that served their country beautifully. Um, and I've been down to Melbourne a number of times. Melbourne, uh, down there at, at Amy Park, do it fantastically well. Um, it's a night game. They, they use the lights well. The service is beautiful. Um, you know, and, well, the Dragons and the Roosters is your traditional Anzac Day game. But, um, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great thing to be at. I, I don't think, unless you've experienced an Anzac Day game, you really... You don't appreciate it if you watch it on television. If you're if you're at the game, um, it is spine tingling, really. Yeah. When they play the last stand, um, and rugby league is such a great sport, uh, you know. And and for us to celebrate it as good as we do, it's um, it really is. It, it's an honour to be part of it. Even even if you're commentating the game, you you feel like you are part of it. So uh, it's a big thrill. Hey, Greg, I'm just going to move on to the Penrith Panthers just for, for a second. The mm. uh, Fisher-Harris news just blew us all out of the uh, out of the park yesterday when it came across. Was it a recent thing or had he sort of touched base with the club, do you know, this, saying, oh, this is what I'm thinking? Or was it all happening as we uh, led to believe the last month or so? Uh, you, well, I, I was shocked too, Fletch, and no one knew before Sunday that James was thinking about it. Oh, but in okay. hindsight, yeah, it, it was it was a shock to everyone, and um, I, I would say that it has been in his mind for a while. You know, the Pacific mm. Championships, he would have spent time in New Zealand. Obviously, he was a captain of the, the Kiwis, um, and I guess going home for his grandfather's funeral, I. It, it probably just confirmed, and he spent a week there. Remember, he hurt his shoulder against uh, yep. Parramatta? Yep. So he was out a couple of weeks, and just his, his grandfather just happened to pass away, and he went and spent a week in, in New Zealand. So I, I think that just confirmed that his brother, who's been living overseas, uh, is moving back to New Zealand. That obviously had an effect on him too. Mm. And one of the things that he told 
um, the the coaching staff and, and Mac Cameron is that when he was at his grandfather's funeral, the funeral was done in Maori, and he said not many could understand the Maori language. And, and I think that affected him greatly. And he said, mm. oh, I want to bring my kids up. I want to, I want to go back to my area. He said, I'm, yeah. you know, I've been in this area now since I was a kid, since I was 15. I've been in Penrith. And he said, but I want to take my family home and be strong for my culture. Um, so I, it's, a, it's a little bit deeper than just, you know, mm. James wanting to go yeah. home. Um, and I, you could only imagine that a character like James Fisher-Harris, um, decisions aren't made on a whim. Um, so it's probably been rattling around in his head for, for some time, but, but not a, I, I would say not a great deal of time. And uh, you can only appreciate that, I, you know, and yeah. not, not from not one person. Once the board was informed of the request, uh, the coaching staff, um, everyone involved at Panthers, it, the, the decision to allow James to do what he wants to do was unanimous. Yeah. Mm. And no, you can't begrudge when you say when you oh. say that, Brand. When you describe it like that, you're just probably mm. thinking. And he's done so well. Like but, yeah. he's been there for 15. He's won three oh. competitions. It's and give it his all. I tell you, yeah. a golden boot winner. Golden, golden boot, boot winner. winner. Yeah, um, Brandy. I, I just want to share this because I, I, success leaves clues. And I think back to when the Roosters won that grand final with Cooper Cronk being injured. Not a person knew what the bloody hell was going on. There wasn't a whisper. Mm. You couldn't find out until literally. The hour before kickoff, the team was named. We still didn't know what was going to happen. And Trent Robbins was talking about, don't put the onus on someone else to spread the rumour. And it was a very tight-knit crew. For, for you to know about this and the greater team on Sunday, and likewise, same has to be said at the other end, at the Warriors, mm. it just goes to show, Brian, how, how well-placed both these clubs are, that both some part of the Warriors and some part of the Panthers must have known on Sunday or Monday. Yep. And we did not hear a single rumour, nothing. No there, spotted at the airport. There, there was nothing no. until until the actual release come out. Mm. Which, which, Brandy, that, that's a big rap to both clubs, isn't it? The Penrith Panthers and the Warriors to, to keep that so tightly held. Uh, yeah, well, we've seen what, what happens to clubs, Joel and, and Fletch, when, you know, when stories are leaked to the media. Um, yeah. It, it, it causes problems. Um, you know, speculation, um, finger pointing. Um, you know, th- there's a lot that's that goes on if if you're leaking information to the media. And I'm I'm not saying I'm part of the media, so yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing for us, but it's it's not a great thing for the for a club if you know that something is said inside your four walls will escape and get out to the public. And I I, I don't think you can run a successful club. Unless you have uh, those four walls are watertight, and what is discussed inside those four walls stays there, and the effect that leaking stories has on a team and the players is is enormous. Yeah. You know, all, all of a sudden you've got, you know, if you've got the the public, the general public talking about something that really should be kept in house, and the effect that that can have on the team and the players is enormous. So it, it might seem like nothing, and and you know, not an important part, but it is Joel. It, yeah, I, I agree, totally agree with you. It's you absolutely players, crucial. Any of the players maybe you've known, like that would, would um, yeah, any the, all, he leaned yeah. on a couple of the players to say. No, he's the, thinking the players about did know. The the, play, oh, the okay. players were informed. The players were informed on Tuesday, right? Tuesday. We don't find out until officially on. It's it's a hu- it's huge. Like mm. a story of that magnitude, Brandy, with so many people who may have had access to that information. It is truly. Less than five percent, and and that is just testament to both the Warriors, the Panthers, the managers who who also play a big part in league. Whoever the managers were involved in this also play a part in how watertight this was. Congratulations, right. Brandy, and, and you handled it perfectly. Thanks, Jolly. Yeah, it, it it wasn't certainly wasn't great news when I heard it, but no. um, yeah, I think I think the clubs handled it well, and I I think um, it's a good thing, you know, for James to be doing really what he wants to do after the service he's given the club. Yep. You need to get out to Allianz Stadium, Brandy, so yes. we better let you go. And we appreciate we've I taken do. up way more than we, we'd asked of you. But uh, thanks so much. 
That's good to talk two days in a row. Can't believe yeah. it. Hey? <laughs> We're on tomorrow too, yeah. as you told you. Yeah, what are you doing tomorrow? I was going to ring. What are you, what are you doing? Wacky <laughs> Team Wednesday. That, that, no, yeah, that's, no, uh, that's a real highlight for me. Yeah, yeah. Wacky it's Team fabulous Wednesday. Friday. I love Wacky yes. Team Wednesday. It's, uh, fabu- it's tomorrow is fabulous front rower Friday. So yes, we've got to come yes. up with terms of front rowers. Hope you're Penny Wong is my favourite player. Penny Wong, she goes <laughs> yeah, good. She's my favourite. Yeah. Thanks, Brandy. Have a good call tonight with Vossi and we'll boys in the morning. Uh, well done. Uh, piece it together with free access to select military records at ancestry.com.au. Free access ends April 26. Registration required. Terms apply.